Good morning, everybody. Happy Halloween. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. Hope everybody's doing great Sunday morning. We have an amazing, amazing, interesting conversation to talk about today. NFTs. NFTs, non-fungible tokens. And we're going to be joined by my friend, fellow attorney, Mike Ortiz. Talk about the craze. What is going on with NFTs? What is going on with NFTs? What is everybody doing for Halloween today? Anybody who's watching so far? Brian, what are you doing? If you're still watching. <laughs> Let me see if I can pin the topic here. NFTs. Post. Pin. You're drinking coffee. What kind of coffee are you drinking? I'm just waiting for Mike to join us here in a couple of minutes. So we're going to talk about non-fungible tokens, um, what they are, how you create them, how people are monetizing them, some of the crazy dollar values that are... Um, just being projected onto NFTs and whether they're actually worth anything, why people are going crazy. Um, Brian is drinking pumpkin spice. I'm not a big fan, man. I don't know. People can hate on me for that, but I'm just not a big fan of pumpkin spice. I just think they're, it's, it's overrated. It's too sweet. It's too sweet for my palate. I prefer a, a European or Ethiopian Yurga chef over pumpkin spice myself personally. Anyway, um, if any of you are watching and have questions either on this live or usually we record and we rebroadcast re this, if you have questions on what an NFT is and uh, why they are going as bonkers as they are. And if you're interested in creating one even, maybe we can talk about that as well. It looks like Mike's here. Add Mike in. <clears throat> Hey, Mike, how are you, man? Ray is good, man. How you doing? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. I see a lot of greenery back there. Oh, yeah. I'm in my backyard because the baby took over my uh, home office. So <laughs> <laughs> so you got Vince's office, right? Yeah, exactly. All right, man. Well, you've been doing good. Everybody's healthy. Yeah, everybody's healthy, safe. You know, the baby is getting some, some like her third teeth or tooth so okay. uh, she's not sleeping throughout the night so oh man oh good, man good time <laughs> this is baby one for you yeah okay man well you know enjoy it you know what you'll miss these days later on you know years from now you're gonna think back and like damn if only his baby couldn't talk and walk anymore <laughs> <laughs> that's know? what i hear man that's what i hear <laughs> So um, thanks for thanks for joining. Where, where are you joining us from today? Uh, I'm in Corona, California. Beautiful. Um, so it wasn't 102 there yesterday. I'm assuming. No, no, no. It was it was warm uh, today. It's going to be cool, uh, nice and cloudy. You know, good Halloween weather. All right. What are your plans tonight? You're going to be just chilling, maybe watch a movie. I hope. <laughs> Uh, we got trunk trunk or treat that uh, we got you know little costumes for the baby uh, trunk or treat and then uh, hand out some some candies for the neighborhood kids uh, closer to the evening time. Same, same. Yeah, good. Nice. Well, well, um, I think we've talked about NFTs briefly before, but I, I wanted to kind of revisit it a little bit and um, just discuss what what the hype's about, right? And so. I know NFTs are uh, non fungible tokens are, you know, kind of a um, something you follow, you know, and, and you have an interest in it just like I do. So I figured let's we, we could chat about it, uh, maybe answer some questions and then talk about some of the, the NFTs that are in the news and figure out, you know, is this just hype? Is this here to stay? Is the technology um, here to stay? And is this something that's just going to fizzle out and, you know, what we should be 
looking at, right? So um, why don't you kind of tell us what's an NFT? Like, just break it down. <clears throat> yeah, so an NFT, uh, like you said, is a non-fungible token. Think of like a, uh, a series of uh, artists' paintings where they number them, you know, one through a thousand or something. Um, so each individual token is separate and distinct from the other in the set, whether it's by ID number or whether it's a, a totally different, you know, has different data associated with it. Um, and, and as opposed to, for example, if you buy like one Ethereum or, or one SHIB or whatever, if you buy 10 SHIBs, they're all interchangeable with each other. Like no one token is unique from the other. Whereas a non-fungible token, they are separate and distinct. And that's the, the, the fundamental definition of an NFT. They're used for, I mean, it's a tool that has so many possibilities and, and they're used a lot uh, for, to put pieces of art or, uh, uh, you know, IP on, on a blockchain. Uh, but yeah, that's, I mean, very basic uh, explanation of them. So it's interesting because when we say fungible, right, in economics, we mean it's, it's replaceable. Exactly like you said. If I buy, you know, a red jacket from Nike, that, you know, I can, if something happens to that, I can go and buy the exact same red jacket at Nike again. Nike's producing hundreds of thousands or millions of these jackets. Now, if I want a particular red jacket that I touched and maybe is signed by Michael Jordan, right, that is a little more unique. It's non-fungible because it's got a signature on it. It's got his fingerprints on it, right? And it's there's only one, assuming that he didn't sign more of these, and therefore it's non-fungible. So we could kind of replace the word fungible with replaceable. It's it's non-exchangeable, if you will, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's a great example. Uh, or like, you know, I love NFL. Like when uh, Tom Brady threw his 600th uh, NFL touchdown, and I don't know if you saw Mike, he went yeah. to Mike Evans and Mike Evans gave it to a fan. And, uh, you know, the, the staff, the Buccaneers staff was like, no, I need that ball. Like I need that particular ball because um, it's not replaceable. That's right. And so somebody could, in theory, we'll talk about the back end of how this works, but somebody could, in theory, have taken a picture of Tom Brady handing the ball, right? And – that could, in effect, become a NFT. If somebody snapped that one pick, we could make an NFT out of it. Now, let's go back for a second. This is operating on the blockchain. And I know there's a lot of confusion. A lot of people who don't really follow crypto or what blockchain is still don't have a great understanding of what it is. But how does then the, the non-fungibility concept tie into the token? Yeah, so, you know, the blockchain, it's really just a glorified database, like a glorified Excel spreadsheet. And each uh, token that is, it's like a line item on this spreadsheet has data associated with it. So a uh, fungible token, all the data is the same for every single, you know, item. Whereas a non-fungible token, this particular line item has this particular data. Data, like you explained, could be a photograph. Um, and it's just, uh, it's recorded on the blockchain and uh, it's, it's cryptographically secure, it's public, anybody can verify that that particular data has this, this history of transfer or this source, um, yeah. So, and the ledger is is this public sort of computer network, and so there's multiple, there's millions of verifications, micro transactions, just to verify the existence of a particular token or what's happening on the ledger, right? And so, right. It, it gives us an opportunity to have a decentralized ability to transact, which is the main point of blockchain, which is decentralizing, and you have authentication happening on this back-end ledger, it would almost be like, tell me what you think of this analogy, it would almost be like, you know, basically what Bank of America or Chase does, right? You, you swipe your debit card, Ch Chase has to then make sure, hey, Rice has $100 in his account, and that $100 has to go to Mike Ortiz. And so 
the calculation needs to be done. It also needs to consider what's in the account. The difference here is that's not public information. Nobody can verify that. You know, it's only you, you will get paid only if the bank clears it for you, right? And I will be able to pay you only if the bank clears it for me. Um, and so we have these situations where there's fraud, of course, where uh, people are running somebody's debit card or physically created a copy of it. And, the ch you know, Chase Bank is presumably will, will stop the fraud from happening or reverse charge, et cetera, et cetera. But point is, it's a series of transactions. So if we were to take that bank sort of transaction ledger and put it on a public network, now there's something more similar to what we're talking about with blockchain and having a ledger, right, where there's accessibility and there's all the computers are reflecting the same data, right? We're relying on the same sort of thing. Would that be, that's pretty accurate? Yeah, yeah. And that's, I mean, you know, uh, as as society advances, technology technology advances, we're doing the same thing. We're just using different technology to do that thing, and that's what blockchain really is. It's the next step of an account, or like an account ledger, like the banks have done. And in the past, the banks had, you know, a big old uh, sheet of paper, and they would manually debit or credit an account, and they would have to communicate it to another bank. Um, and now they use the internet for that. This is just sort of that next step. So now we kind of connect the, the, the non-fungible art. So, you know, let's talk about what people are actually making and selling as an NFT and how it connects to the ledger. So basically we have people who create something, an interface, whether it's a video clip, an image, some sort of art, right? Something. Um, and now there is a, it's backed by a coin. Usually it's backed by what? Ethereum for the most part is, is the primary Ethereum, coin. Ethereum is the most popular and the most used, but it is possible to do this on almost any blockchain. Um, uh, Tezos is one that where NFTs are being made on. Um, Solana is one. It's a it's a newer blockchain, but it's very popular. Uh, the activity there is starting to really really grow. And even like Doge has NFTs, and um, pretty much everything. Bitcoin even has NFTs, but it's technologically complicated. But yeah, any blockchain can potentially do this. Ethereum is the most popular though, and most used. So basically, how would somebody create? um an nft right how, how do how do they go about starting one and how would they then publicly market that yeah so there's the uh the like technologically sound way that like all the crypto uh, uh, uh fundamentalists would say is the way to do it and then there are also uh, service providers like software providers. Um, OpenSea is probably the most popular that allow you to do it on their platform. Um, similar to uploading a photograph to Facebook. It's very easy on OpenSea. Um, but uh, to start with the sort of most technologically uh, uh, accepted as far as crypto natives go is you you take this jpeg or this png or this you know whatever file and you upload it to a blockchain called ipfs which is it stands for interplanetary file system so it is a blockchain that is created to store data and uh, because of that it can store more data than ethereum so they upload it to IPFS, and when they upload it, it creates a hash, and that hash is unique, you know. Um, that's where the crypto comes in. Creates a hash, and then uh, they create a token on Ethereum or Tezos or Solana, and then they, uh, in the data for the Ethereum token, they reference that hash. So it is cryptographically connected. That's how most of them are created right now. Um, another way that it's done because Ethereum, uh, each block has a data limit. And um, so a lot of files, uh, video files, even, you know, image files are too large for the Ethereum block size. Um, so if the file is small enough, you can just put the data in the Ethereum block um, itself. There are very few NFT projects that do this, but if you can do this, this is like the most 
uh, crypto, uh, like, lo- like crypto natives love to have the data on the blockchain. Um, Larva Labs is one who has figured out how to do that. And, and some of their NFTs are very uh, valuable. Um, and then the sort of, you know, uh, very simple, easy way is uh, on OpenSea. I'll use OpenSea because it's so popular and people use it so much. Um, you just have your, your account on OpenSea and you just click create an NFT and you just upload your file, your audio file or your uh, image file or whatever file. And it's really just like uploading it to Facebook or Instagram. It's so easy, um, but that's a little less technologically sound, but it still works, you know? So basically there are, there are marketplaces for NFTs, right? There's places where you can create, you can buy, you can sell. The other thing that's interesting about an NFT is the technology of what the NFT allows the creator to do. In other words, you could code in, you could, you could sort of offer some sort of um, automatic requirements or conditions along with the sale and creation of the NFT. Like you could program it to say, every time this thing resells, I get 10%, right? Yeah. It's awesome. Um, I mean, if you wanted to, uh, well, I'll I'll go ahead. Um, This is like, uh, for artists, like this is so awesome because you and I both know that uh, artists, we talk about uh, new up and coming artists who maybe sell the rights to their work uh, for very low prices. And then 20 years later, that same, those IP rights uh, are selling for hundreds of thousands of dollars or mil- you know, they, they increase in value so much, but they assign their ownership you know so cheaply so what nfts allow is they allow perpetual royalties so uh and the technology for these royalties is still being uh advanced but in general all of the major crypto marketplaces recognize these royalties so if i sell something for a hundred dollars i can put a 10 percent perpetual royalty on it and if it sells in 10 years for a hundred thousand dollars 10% of that is going to automatically get sent to my digital or my crypto wallet. And and artists are uh, thriving because of this. It's, it's really interesting. So just to talk numbers, there's estimates about NFT sales volumes, right? For 2021, this is mind blowing. Most reports say like in the first half or like first somewhere between the first quarter, first half of 2021, 2.5 billion dollars of nft sales volume that's why people should be paying attention to this because it's like this is not a small marketplace it's not like a few hundred transactions or a few million 2.5 billion dollars in sales of nfts that's crazy yeah um you know and and recently i had i had posted about this but uh the rap rapper tory lanes had come out and hyped up his album which is he released as an nft and may- maybe he released it as an NFT so that he could get the perpetual payment uh, upside every time it sells or resells. But he hyped it up basically saying, look, he claims he sold a million copies of it in 60 seconds. I don't know if you saw that, but um, yeah, he, he, he claims, Tory Lanez claims he sold a, a million copies of his record in 60 seconds, which I, I believe is possible. I'm not saying it's impossible. So he goes platinum. But then he says, look, everybody who bought it for a dollar, Go and sell it, resell it. He's pushing people, resell it. And people are reporting, people are reporting. I'm reading this thing where he says, he claims some people are selling it now for $60,000. So um, it's interesting. It's interesting because why sell an album, which will probably end up on YouTube, um, for why buy it from somebody for 60000 And maybe it's because people feel, hey, it's one of a million that Tory Lanez released and there's hype, there's speculation that the value will increase. I don't know. Um, do you have any thoughts on that? On, on why there's so many dollars? In there? Yeah. I mean, you know, it's very hard to understand unless you really understand um, why NFTs in general are so loved by the crypto natives. Um, and uh, so Imagine you were able to buy uh, Rolling Stones is like first, uh, maybe the first 
time they transitioned from vinyl to 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 CD to compact disc, and you're able to buy that first CD that they ever made, and they only made a million of them, and um, and then you know it's been I don't know how many years since that has happened, but these things get lost, they get destroyed, so you know they get uh, there are forgeries that are made, um, but if you can get it certified by you know a, a, a whatever collector verification system like those things might sell for for a good amount of money so so what tory lanes is doing is he's capturing some of that and the people who are forward seeking are buying it for this reason because they know that uh, because it's on a blockchain and because it's an nft 40 years from now there's not going to be any damage to it there's not going to, I mean, maybe they could lose it, but so long as they, you know, maintain their, their access to that wallet, they're not going to lose it. And maybe Tory Lanez 40 years from now is like Snoop Dogg level or something. And, and people will be able to say like, look, this is his first, uh, you know, album that he released on an NFT and I have it. Um, or look at uh, Wu Tang's Wu Tang Clan's uh, their one uh, record. Yes. like you know that thing is, it, and it's funny because a crypto DAO, which is a decentralized autonomous organization, essentially an investment group of crypto natives, just purchased that Wu Tang album because they recognize that there is it's a characteristic a collector's characteristic about these things that make them so valuable and let me just comment the reason why these numbers uh seem staggering and why they're really not is because what nfts allow is they allow for creators to reach a global marketplace unlike any other platform ever it is very seamless frictionless global market so, uh, you know, whereas if you sold something on eBay in the United States, you're limited to the U.S. and you have to pack, ship, you know, all this stuff. NFTs, you got the entire world. You have millionaires, billionaires throughout the world. Uh, and it's super simple. Once the transaction is done, it's done. And there's no like logistics involved. It's it takes so much friction out of these transactions. And, and you're getting paid instantly and it's decentralized. It's, it's in your crypto wallet and uh, you're done. So as long as you trust in, in the back, I mean, you can cash out your, your crypto too the sec second you get it, right? And so, yeah, it's interesting. The Wu-Tang one is particularly interesting. So some people may not know about this. Wu-Tang Clan, one of the greatest hip hop groups of all time, I think, right? You, you yeah. recognize that, I recognize they're releasing a 30, 36 copies, very, very limited, 36 copies of a, what I saw was a 400 pound book um, through NFTs, right? And so it's basically, you know, a very limited, uh, never before seen pictures of, you know, this, of the, of the group. Um, and it's in a book format, right? <clears throat> and so obviously this is very, very limited. So you want to talk about non-fungible. I mean, as it is, it's, it's extremely limited. Um, and so they're offering it through NFTs. And I think somebody has already paid, I mean, a, over a million dollars for, for one of these. I don't know if it's, um, if it's trending or what the data is, but the point is like, what an opportunity if you are a, uh, a crypto person and if you are into collecting things, what a rare opportunity, right? Particularly if you're into hip hop. Um, but even like traditional auction houses, like Christie's and Sotheby's, I think Christie's is getting into now offering things that were being auctioned through an NFT. We saw some crazy, crazy, uh, crazy numbers on this. Um, I know that somebody bought, <clears throat> I think in earlier this year, <clears throat> somebody bought Jack Dorsey, the co-founder of Twitter, bought his first tweet, which came out in October of 2006 <laughs> for $2.9 million, right? And, and, but it's a lot of hype, right? So the value of these things can't exactly be pinpointed, right? I mean, yeah. it's just like anything else that's maybe rare and valuable. Um, and it's particularly weirder because there's not many comparables of this. Like, we don't really know what an NFT of X should really trade for. It's, there's a lot of hype and speculation, right? Um, <clears throat> so you could end up, end up paying hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars for something that's really worth nothing. 
Isn't that true? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, like, just it, this is economics. Things bubble bubble up, you know. Um, and it's it's a very sort of network effect related thing, you know. One NFT sells for a lot, and others start selling for a lot, and then it creates this very hyped up fad craze situation. Um, but that doesn't mean, I mean, in my opinion, that doesn't mean that these aren't valuable. It just means that they go through their natural cycle of like overvaluation, undervaluation. And, you know, just like any economic market, there's a mean and, and, and so forth. Um, but, you know, uh, Christie's, so some of the highest selling NFTs are the ones that were either created in 2017. Um, so, you know, the idea of NFTs is as old as crypto. You know, some of the first uh, attempts at creating NFTs were on Bitcoin. Um, there were things called color coins and name coins. And, and um, you know, uh, actually one of the oldest NFT was created on a Bitcoin um, chain called Counterparty. And those are called rare Pepes, which um, because they were not on Ethereum, they haven't gotten as hyped, but... Um, those are from those are pre crypto punks, but crypto crypto punks uh, was really the first proof of concept of NFTs on Ethereum, and Ethereum allows it just because some of the technological capabilities of Ethereum. And um, so, Larva Labs is the company that created crypto punks in 2017, and they gave them away for free. And when they were giving them away, Ethereum was like, you know, a hundred dollars or so, or like three hundred dollars. And people didn't buy them because they had to pay thirty dollars in Ethereum gas fees to claim these crypto punks. Well, one of the highest selling NFTs, single NFTs, was is a um, an alien crypto punk. There were ten thousand crypto punks, and each uh, crypto punk has different attributes, characteristics, um, and aliens are some of the most rare out of those. And uh, Christie's sold an alien for, I believe, nine million dollars. Um, <laughs> insanity! Yeah, insanity! And, and they're they're consistently like the most rare crypto punks are consistently selling. For millions and millions of dollars, uh, nine million, eight million, three million, two million. Um, so, uh, it, if 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 you can identify the sort of sound investments, those surely, I mean, in ten years are going are going to be worth more because there's the history and the inability to to duplicate that NFTs that are being created now. However, it's different because. Uh, there's so many of them being created more than likely a lot of the ones that are being made right now are going to hit a, you know, bear market, so to speak, as soon as the, the hype dies down and yeah, you might be stuck with a bag. It's, it's interesting. And I go back to music too, because the rappers have really, uh, rap always helps to commercialize, right? Hip hop culture always helps to commercialize things. And so not surprisingly, um, many rappers have taken to NFTs to launch uh, their brand, not necessarily for the money, but maybe it was to pr maybe it was a promotional thing, right? Um, but I know through Crypto.com, uh, Snoop Dogg released a small collection of of cryptos, right? Of NFTs, excuse me. Um, and, you know, digital forms of art that he created, and one of his pieces sold for a hundred grand, right? Recently, and it's just like I don't think he really cares about the the money. I think for him, it's just like. It's, it's branding, right? And if anything, he may have been endorsed by crypto to get that, uh, that promotion, right? To get people on it. Um, little Yachty did the same thing. He sold a coin, a Yachty coin for 16,000. His first ever uh, NFT last year um, called the Yachty coin, right? And it looks like there was a bidding war and the token was sold for, yeah, it went up all the way to 16 grand. Um, so, you know, Jack Harlow, has has rapped about um nft i mean there's just there's so many like the list just goes on and so i think it's it's interesting because i think this will grow i think the hype is I, we haven't come anywhere near the apex of, of the hype yet i think most people are still trying to figure out what it is um and just like crypto generally most people probably are not going to get involved in investing because there's they're scared of what it is they don't really understand what's going on but 
it, like you said, it's created an amazing opportunity for artists, right? Um, if, if, you're, if you might be a, especially this idea of going viral on social media, if you create something, people love it, right? It's trending. But then you say, all right, I'm going to release this as an NFT and I'm going to only release five. People want that, right? These crazy memes. People want to be, hey, I own that. Every time it gets sold, I get a chip. Um, and there's something kind of cool about that. Yeah, so there's a lot to uh, comment on. Uh, so, so if so, I would say Twitter is probably the the uh, the water cooler for crypto and NFTs, and uh, in particular, a lot of these NFTs because there's so much flex involved. Like just the same reason people rock a Rolex or a Supreme or a limited edition Supreme shirt. Um, so Jay Z is rocking a crypto punk as his avatar on Twitter. Um, so is uh, um, well, Busta Rhymes had something. Um, uh, Snoop Dogg is rocking a crypto punk. Um, and when I say rocking, I mean that's their profile picture. So so there's so much culture involved, and that's why hip hop artists, I think, are very like it's it's part of their language. They understand. <laughs> the value of culture and flexing an image. And so that's a, a lot of it is that as well, because how else are you going to like have this sort of, you know, how else are you going to show everybody that you're a millionaire aside from saying that, like showing that you own this $5 million crypto punk and rocking it as your avatar, you know? Um, and another thing is that with, uh, uh, so little yacht so a lot of the the buyers right now are people who are native to crypto because to to buy these nfts you have to be familiar with ethereum familiar with the the tools to buy it so a lot of like little yachty is an example of people that have come into the space to try to do some cash grab type of things and and you know they build up the hype and then they sort of drop the ball and then like it's just a marketing ploy for them so um you know you you have to be wary of that stuff um but but yeah you know our hip-hop artists are very you know it's part of their language. It's really interesting. I, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be watching this pretty closely and, and, and I don't know. I think this is here to stay. I think there's a lot of use cases for the technology. Um, and it's just going to be interesting. I think we'll see more and more artists using NFTs to launch, um, you know, music, original pieces, try to get it in the hands of people. And of course, the secondary market will do what the secondary market always does, right? And it starts yeah. trading and create some speculation. Um, but it's really interesting. It's, it, it, it's, it kind of feeds off of hype and scarcity and uh, the human emotion. You know, we're, we're weird creatures, man. Like as soon as we have a roof over our heads and a little bit of cash, we want to flaunt, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, that we have something, um, whether that's a, a rare piece of music or art or, the fact that I've got something that sold for a million dollars and nobody knows about it yet. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's super interesting. So if somebody wanted to learn kind of more about um, NFTs and, and crypto and trading, like where would they start? Where's, what's, what are some reliable sources? Oh, geez, man. You know, to be honest with you, I am on Twitter. Uh, Twitter is my go-to social media platform. And um, there, there are some really good people to, to follow on Twitter. Um, I'd say, you know, probably the best thing and, and, uh, is to follow some of these, um, companies. So like Larva Labs and their CryptoPunks. Larva Labs has CryptoPunks, Autoglyphs, MeBits. Those are all very popular projects. Follow them and then see who they interact with and then follow them. Uh, Bored Apes, uh, Bored Ape Yacht Club as silly as it sounds is a very popular. And, um, so like if you just sort of start with these, good projects and see their circle you can um uh you know find some info and of course so i'm actually you know uh you know i'm an attorney and i have my law practice but i'm an entrepreneur as well so I, i'll be starting something in the space um, nice it's a basically it's going to be a technology a technology consulting uh on-ramp for artists so the artists can create their own nfts the right way using you know sound technology um 
and I'll be coming out with that in, in the next few weeks, actually. Um, but I do want to just comment really quickly. Um, sure. I forgot to mention earlier. So some of these projects are using like either the terms of use on their website or in the token to assign licenses to the work, to the, to the artwork, to the owners. So Bored Apes, for example, in their terms of use, it says, if you own this Bored Ape, you have the right to commercialize this image and make derivative works of this image. So what we're mm. seeing what we're seeing is people are buying these projects and creating brands around them. There's Bored Ape IPA. There's, you know, there's a Bored Ape, uh, I believe a cannabis company. Um, so that's insanely like cool. Um, and then uh, a another uh, thing is that, so when a lot of these, NFT projects are very limited. There are about 10,000 or less um, of these particular NFTs. For example, CryptoPunks, there's only 10,000 CryptoPunks. Uh, Board Apes, there's only 10,000 of them. So what we're seeing is brands are buying one of these NFTs in order to have this very like uh, 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 active community at their beck and call. Visa just bought a CryptoPunk. And after they did that, everybody in, in crypto was like, oh, yeah, Visa. And they're making memes with Visa. Um, so, like, God, there's just so much happening. Uh, there are people that are trying to sell real estate via NFT. Um, and it is so exciting, man. You know, it's it's I'm telling you, I, I think you're right on. I think the technology is, is, is not going anywhere. It's the use case. It's just like dot com boom, right? People thought, oh, speculation. Okay. What is Internet? This guy's creating a website that. People joked about what a web page even was. Remember this? Oh, you can't yeah. see it. You can't tell. Well, what, what? Early 90s. And yeah, there was a boom. There was a bubble. There was a burst. But that's the same thing that all that social media was birthed out of. Pre-social media, all these web platforms were birthed out of. And buying and selling domain names. I mean, the list goes on. The use case goes on and on and on. So that's the exciting part. It's not just necessarily, you know, the, the creation of of dollars and, and economy that based on nfts it's the technology and the evolution of it and the application and use case for nfts right like you said it's it's infinitesimal and it's putting power back in individuals hands versus the large corporate interests um which i think is always cool like individuals can like you said properly build an nft or artists can build an nft you can buy and sell um and so it's yeah it's super interesting man super interesting um well, great. What's your Twitter handle? And I, when we post this, we'll we'll, we'll tag your uh, handle on it too, so we can we can follow what you're doing on that. Yeah, yeah. So my Twitter handle is at Mikey M I K E Y underscore Ortiz, uh, and my Instagram handle is at Mike dot Ortiz dot one thousand. Uh, yeah, man. Super super exciting. Like I I love being an attorney that has studied ip and and everything like what it's gonna allow our entertainment uh clients to do is like it, it's so so exciting man i'm sure you're very excited about it uh, I, i'm i'm super interested from the from the art and music aspect of it i really i mean as somebody who who dabbles in that personally myself as a hobbyist <clears throat> i think it's the possibilities are endless and again from a monetization standpoint too it's super exciting because now you have people who you don't have to worry about auctioning your work or creating a gallery and having, you know, whining and dining gallery owners and all this. Stuff. You can do it from your room and scale to millions of people around the world and put it in the hand. Like, like you said, you can create a derivative work out of it. You get a license for it. So you're buying a brand. You can't do that with the Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa is Mona Lisa, right? Yeah. Or, or, or if you buy um, music rights to some degree, if you license music rights, there's a lot of, um, sort of red tape and then the artist never knows if they're going to even get paid on the use of it whereas this is kind of creating a security layer behind you have no choice you're going to get paid like it's going to happen um, yeah man super exciting happy to talk more in the future about it too yeah yeah absolutely we'll do we'll do another um, we'll do another one of these specifically about what's happening and what's new in nft world thanks for breaking this down for us and uh enjoy your halloween enjoy passing out candy Try not to eat all the peanut butter cup like I do. <laughs> yeah, and Kit Kat. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, good, good seeing you, man. All right? 
Yeah, you too, Ray. Have a good Take day. Take care. Okay, bye.